Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV! Before heading on over to the Antlion Cave, let's go over here to get some treasure! Why not? There it is! Yeah, they trick you! They put this right on the outside, so you can't find it that easily unless, well, you know to look for it. Take all this treasure that... You might be a bad guy, but... Well, take it anyway, if you're not. If you are, uh, 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 pay, pay no attention to me. I'm I'm just blabbering nonsense. But anyway, here we get a power bow. All right. Another feathered cap. Awesome. And a ruby ring. Excellent. Let's see. I think Edward already comes with the feathered cap. Yes, he does. Okay. And let's see. We can't equip the bow. Uh, neither can Rydia, either. Uh, bows are exclusive to one character now. It's not like the 2D versions of the game where pretty much anyone could equip them. No. No. So, yeah, they really limited equipment like that, if I didn't say so before. But, oh, wow. Uh, the ruby ring there, you could hold on to for later. Or you could go through a secret passage. Haha. -ha. Yeah, they hide this one on you really well. But yeah, um, I'm gonna sell the ruby ring because it's worth quite a bit of gill at this point in the game. I may decide to use it later, but it's not as good as it was in the 2D versions. It's not as useful, I mean. Holy arrows, awesome. You wanna hold on to those for later. And eye drops, all right, awesome. Uh, you also wanna hold on to the power bow and feathered cap for later. Spoiler alert, we're going to recruit someone who can actually use those eventually. But for right now, not so much. And you know what? As long as we're here, there's a couple people who showed up ever since we, well, first came here. So let's go talk to them. I don't know where they were hiding before, but, oh, no, it's not here yet. Well, they're here now. I mean, before in the 2D versions... You just simply couldn't come over here to talk to them, but... Fabul, huh? Oh... Nuts. If only we had a way of getting past that, but... I suppose we don't need to worry about it, because all we gotta do is just save Rosa. So... Oh... So that's how you get back. Okay. So, yeah, basically the hovercraft is kind of like, a. Uh, well, you can go over land and avoid all random encounters, but you can also just go right over some water with it. Not deep waters, though. Only, like, shallow waters. And you'll see some rocks and shoals and all that stuff that you can, that'll indicate whether you can cross it or not. But, okay, so that's everything we can do there. Let's head on to the Antline Cave, then. Straight east. See, these are the shoals. And just go right through. Oh yeah, I should uh, rearrange my party now that I've got more party members. So, let's see, we've got Ice Rod, Thunder, yeah, you're all good there. Cecil, all good there. Let's see, I want to move Bard Song up because that's actually pretty useful now in the 3D versions of the game. Let's go Defend, and I think you're good there. Let me just take a quick look. Uh, Bard Song is pretty much like White, Black Magic, and so on. Uh, now, you can just select whatever song you want. Kind of like uh, Final Fantasy V, in a way. Costs zero MP, and it, it's uh, pretty fast to cast, too. So you can, like, silence, confuse, put all enemies to sleep real easily. It's really nice. And some of the later songs you can get are obscene. So, not today, though. But just something to keep in mind. I will be using Edward for that, though. Oh, yeah, Edward joins at a much higher level than before, but, well, he's still not that strong anyway. So, okay, so for equipment, let's see, Rydia, so you get that, that, you know what, let's give her the iron armlet, and then give Edward the silver armlet to kind of balance them out, because, uh, let's see, Rydia has much more stamina, and, and, yeah, than Edward does. Uh, stamina reduce is part of your defense calculation for physical attack, so you want to watch out for that and your defense stat. It's not just your defense stat like the 2D versions of the game. And let's see, Edward, let's see, Bard's tunic. That also protects against silence. You want to remember that for later, viewers. And okay, 
yeah, all our equipment is all set and ready to go. So let's uh, save up here then. There we go. And check out the antlion cave. See if we can't find that sand pearl for Rosa there. Oh, yeah, we probably got character thoughts here. You just entered the cave. You're not even close. Well, the dungeon is pretty short, but still. Ah, sure, sounds like a plan. How hard could it possibly be? Okay, well, let's take a look around then. Keep an eye on the mini-map there. Oh, spider silk. Uh, that can be used to cast slow on enemies. I've banned it for this LP because I think it's a little too obscene, but it is there. By the way, the way uh, the way slow works now is uh, what is it? Oh yeah, slow is considered a status ailment, not a stat modifier like it was in the 2D versions of the game. So it's not like the 2D versions where you could stack slow a couple times and make it really obscene. No, I mean it's still really, really good, worth banning, but. Yeah, uh, Spider Silk is no better than a slow spell, unlike the 2D versions of the game. Hmm, a tent. Oh yeah, and that new enemy, the one in the back there, Domavoy. So, or Domavoy, or however you pronounce it, whatever. So, alright, easy enough. Edward's harp is not that useful for dealing actual damage. But the goblins are weak enough, I thought he might be able to kill one. So, let's head on down this way, I think. Let's fill out the map here first. Okay, that should be good. And to the left first. It's an isolated path, so... Yeah, might as well go here first. And by the way, speaking of the Dama boys that we met up with earlier... Uh, and the goblins. Now, it's no longer a spoiler. Goblins can very rarely drop the Goblin Summon. It's the only way to get it. And you use it on Rydia, she learns to summon. It's an item drop, but yeah. A Domavoy, on the other hand... Uh, let's see, we want to use Alluring Air on this guy. And he is weak to Ice Adamantos. Not nearly as hard as in Final Fantasy XIII, but still, he almost one-shot Edward. Where was I? Oh yeah, the uh, Dama voice. Uh, Dama voice, despite having the same uh, model as the regular goblins, they do not drop the goblin summon. So just something to keep in mind there. Ooh, life's anthem. It basically creates a H an HP regenerative effect as long as Edward is singing there. That's one of the passive songs that he can learn. Most of the others, well, the other songs that we've learned already. You, he uses them once, and then he moves on to his next turn, just like casting a spe an ordinary spell. But uh, Life's, Life's Anthem is a passive song where once he starts singing, he'll keep on continuously singing it until either he simply sings the entire song, or it runs out of its duration, or until he sustains damage. I think it's any kind of damage that can interrupt the song. Physical or magical, I think. I don't use passive songs that much, so I don't recall. I mean, Life's Anthem is okay. Like, you could put it as his auto battle command instead of defending, because they would both mitigate the net damage anyway. But I like defending better, personally. It's, it's a little faster there. Okay, we got a new enemy here. Yellow jellies. And uh, just like the red moose that we met up with earlier, these ones, very strong against physical attacks, and magic is pretty much the way to go. Just They're weak to thunder, and yeah, that's all you got to do with them. One thing about yellow jellies, and this floor in particular, if you want to try farming a rainbow pudding, that would be the best place to do it. Outside of this room, that is. Because um, on that floor, uh, yellow jellies are really common. You can meet four of them in a single battle. And 
So yeah, it's just really, or, well, not really easy, but it's relatively easy to farm a rainbow pudding from them. Probably the best place in the game before the final dungeon to do that. I will try to do that later on in the LP, but not right now. I, I want to save it for later when my levels are much higher and the extra experience won't matter. Now, there are a few unique enemies in this room in particular. Starting with the one that I wanted there. All right. We got Basilisk. I probably should have had Rydia... Or not Rydia. Edward use his alluring song. Or alluring air, but... Oh, well. Too late now. Well, at least he attacked Rydia. Uh, the Gaia gear makes her immune to that uh, slow petrify effect that he uses there. Oh, and by the way, the Lamia heart can potentially inflict the confusion status, while the, uh, what was the other heart? The uh, dream heart can inflict the sleep status there. Let's see, yeah, just do a little bit of healing. I want to try and keep Edward's HP up as much as I can there. Now, there is another unique enemy in here that you can encounter, Leshy. Uh, they are weak to fire. But we can meet up with them later, so I'm not going to bother farming them right now. They're also in a forced encounter later on, too. So, yeah, why bother going out of my way to find them? Yeah, we'll find them later on. So let's see, with this part, yeah, you see that little bottom part there on the map I just revealed? Yeah, that can be a little tricky with some of these maps. So yeah, they changed the layout of this floor a little bit. Actually, a lot. And there's some new treasures here, like this, if you missed it earlier, I suppose, but I don't think it's important. It's good to sell, at least. Equipment selling is pretty much the way you're going to be making a lot of your money in the game. Same thing with the ice rod there, but we already got that. So, might as well sell that one, too. Yeah, unfortunately, enemies don't really drop that much gill straight up anymore. So, oh well. We'll still have enough, the way I'm playing the game. Uh, let's see, I don't think there's anything down there. No, I got that part of the map anyway. Just figured I'd get all the treasure around here first, and then go back down. Oh, well, that was easy. Hey, hey, all right, can never have enough of those. Why do those animan choices keep on going after Edward? I mean, obviously, he's the weakest party member I've got, but still... He's a turtle magnet. You're gonna traumatize the poor man. Turn him into a turtle hating freak. Like the Nazgard. But anyway, alright, got that map out of the way. And let's see. Okay, well, we got some more treasure around here, so let's get the rest of that. See, no map completion here. Some floors, like this area, usually small rooms. You don't have to worry about completing the map. They automatically give it to you. And we also got an emergency exit. So that'll be a good way of getting out of the dungeon if you did not buy one earlier. Uh, let's see. I could use a tent here, but I don't think that's necessary. So let's just save up here. And, well, all we got to do is go after the end line now. So let's do it. Let's see. Oh, got to go back to the floor. You could also use Rydia's Warp Spell to get out of the dungeon, but you'd have to spam it a few times in order to get all the way out. Because it only just takes you back a floor. Ah, well, that was easy. Okay, how are we doing here? Just want to make sure I've gotten everything. We're all healed up. Yep. And let's see. Okay, yeah, we're all set and ready to go. All right, looks like we made it. Why would we want her eggs? Why is it, what is it with monsters always pooping out uh, jewels or gems or stuff in these games? Is that like some sort of uh, folklore that I'm unaware of or something? Giant freaking claws. Oh yeah, they won't bother anyone. Whoa. Well, it looks like it's crab battle time! For boss time against the antlion. 
Now, the strategy here is fairly similar to the original version of the game, but eh, it's a little different. So, first things first, you want to have Rydia use the Ice Rod on it, because now it's weak to Ice. Cecil use Darkness there. Now, I want Edward to defend to kind of soak up some damage there, instead of hiding. But anyway, once its eyes are red, as the message says, it's going to counter magical attacks. So you actually want Rydia to defend. That time was a little late on that one. Oh, well. So yeah, have Rydia defend and then have Cecil do the actual attack. Okay, now his eyes are white. So now he'll counter physical attacks, but not magical attacks. So you got to change up your strategy a little bit throughout the battle there. Uh, why don't you defend there? Actually, why don't you... Uh, nope, nope. Come on, hurry up! Damn it! Use a frickin' potion on her. Come on. Okay, good, good. I'd use an ice rod, but I think his eyes are gonna turn red in just a second. Yep. Good thing I didn't use the ice rod, because it takes a moment to charge up there. So, use darkness, and get ready for Cecil's attack. And then. There we go. You could also use poison on him, but I think this boss is actually quite a bit easier than the Octa Mammoth, and he doesn't have as much HP. So I'm not really all that worried about it. Do I have any, like, ice items or anything? Oh, an Antarctic wind. Might as well. I wasn't planning on having Cecil use them like this, but, well, got nothing better to do. Uh, defend, Edward. Thank you. You'll be okay, Rydia. If I do get to Edward's turn, though, I would like him to use a potion. Very good. Oh, by the way, Edward's salve command basically uses an item, like whenever you choose to use an item, he will automatically use one of them on all party members. And when I say one of them, I mean, like, let's say we got three party members now, he'll use three potions and one on each party member. So he'll use them all at once like that. I could have Ed er, Cecil use darkness now, but I think we almost got the guy. Okay, go with that. Have you attack, and you use a potion on Rydia. Hmm, he's taking a little longer to kill than I thought I would think he would, but, well, whatever works. And let's see, his eyes are going to turn red in a moment, or not. Okay, we can get another ice rod in there, why not? And, all right, got it. Easy enough there. So yeah, basically, just what th this battle is sort of another tutorial fight that teaches you how to adapt your strategy to different counters bosses have. That is one thing I really like about the 3D versions of the game is that they announce their counters, so you know, hey, I did something to the boss, and this is making them attack more often. Unlike the 2D versions where you really couldn't tell. I mean, they still did have counterattacks back then, but not as much. And also, you couldn't tell what when they countered something you did or not. Sometimes you could tell, but it was kind of hard, because they didn't directly state so. But, alright, we got our Sand Pearl there. We get some new character thoughts here as well. Uh, I don't think so, Edward. Kind of hard to fight bombs falling from the sky, but whatever works for you. You want to keep beating yourself up? That's your business there. But can we make it back to Kaipo in time to save Rose's life? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.